what do you think the the universal is that you're seeing in painting well it's So there, there's an impulse, which is another word I've been using, right? There's an impulse to do something, to make, not even to like to make something, like to make a painting, but to have the materials and to do something with them, you know, the colors and to put them down and to move them and to move with them. So there's an impulse to that. And in following that, there's all this, you discover all this stuff, like you discover how fun it is to do it. And then you 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 discover what things can do. You know, even as simple as you discover that paint on a paintbrush and put it down, it does something. Every, you know what I'm saying? But you, it's like you're discovering that in the moment. And then... So there's all this discovery that's available. And then there's there's a joy that goes with it. And it can be like a really like quiet, like, like oh my God, this is a masterpiece <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> and again, it's never like me making a masterpiece, but it's like, wow, this is amazing. So all that that's available. And the way it relates to to the principles and and what we were talking earlier about thought is you know for a person to you know let's just say it's a canvas and paints it could be any any art form right so for a person to take that out and start doing something without the um, conditions or influences or negative thoughts that we've all been given about who can make art, what art is, what looks good, that it even makes a difference if you think it looks good or somebody looks good, somebody thinks it looks good. So for you to have that experience that I just described, it's available. But what happens with people, because I know it happened to me before this, is you there are all these thoughts that come come with it. Well, was what I just said. Well, what's art? What's good? If it doesn't look like something, it's not art. Or if you're not trying to say something specific, it's not. Do you know all these thoughts and things that would then. I mean, but the, and they have no power unless, you, like we were saying earlier, they have no power unless you give them power. But we don't see that we're giving them power. So we're giving the thought, "I'm not any good." We're giving them that power, and then not doing what we want, or not even picking up the paintbrush, because we're, we believe that thought. But we can hear that thought, and I hear that I do hear those thoughts sometimes. But it's like it just doesn't. It, ha it doesn't mean anything to me because you just see it as being a thought or you just see it as not not being true or not even being relevant. It's like, yeah, yeah, so what? Like I had this voice once that told me when I started paying, you don't know what you're doing. Right now, in most of life, when you hear that thought, it's like you don't know what you're doing. It's, that's what it sounds like. But this is it was it was very neutral. In fact, I had to had to bring it into to to the form of words because I was just feeling something. It's like you don't know what you're doing. I was like, oh, that's right. I don't know what I'm doing. It was like thanks for reminding me. Like it was a really it, it's a neutral thought that can be like a reason to stop. Or it can be exciting. It's like, wow, I don't know what I'm doing. And that's that's what makes it work. And so that comes back to, we were talking about mystery, the feeling of mystery and not knowing what you're doing. That's kind of what, what I was referring to with mystery and how good it can be. <laughs> what I heard in the universal that you're seeing is that 
there's this impulse to create, which we can just follow. And I say just follow, like just follow the impulse, move with it, do with it, be with it, wherever it is, whatever that impulse is. And in it is enjoyment and discovery. Always available and following the impulse because we enjoy, it's enjoyable to be moved yeah. in creation. And there's discovery because we don't know what we're creating as we create it. And then my experience is that if you show up with anything that way, yeah. you have enjoyment and discovery in the moment, gu guaranteed. And the only thing that takes you out of it is what you were talking about. This thinking, um, conditioning, whatever you want to call it, this anything that takes our attention away from the creation in a way that doesn't feel good. And I'll use the I'll use dance as a metaphor because it's very alive for me in my life. There is that. I don't know what I'm doing when I'm moving my body in a particular way. I've never moved it before. There's an impulse. And there's also an intention to, if I'm in a class, if I'm, I, maybe there's an intention for it to look a certain way or accomplish a certain thing, get into a certain position, which I've never done. And I don't know how to do, and I don't know if I can. And I can easily take myself out of that feeling of enjoyment if I start judging because it doesn't look a certain way. But I can also stay in the enjoyment and notice that it's not what the movement is headed towards. You know, like sometimes there is an intention with the movement, which I think intention is also movement. Or an yeah. impulse, an impulse, yeah. right? Like totally. intention can be an impulse too. It is not necessary. You know, you can just have an impulse with absolutely no intention other than to follow the impulse. Or you can have an impulse of whatever the movement is with a particular desired aim. And neither of those is better or worse or neither of those is anything. All of that, both of those are fully capable of an experience of rich enjoyment and discovery. And I also see a lot of people get hung up around intention because then they start doing the judgment game. But it's not necessary. It's not a part of it. That's the interesting thing, right? Like it's, it's just something that many times we do. It's not yeah. inevitable. 